done it for the past couple of days. I had some personal matters I had to deal with. Um, but I will continue to do it as of today, and I will try to go back and finish the other two that I missed, maybe even make a brief. Um, and so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the recording of the um, uh, conference, okay? So here we go. I'm going to set it up, and here we go. So the president is coming up. He said good morning. So he says today, we're going to be informing regarding a um, gas leak that this merits it to make a call out to these people that are committing these illicit acts. These that are promoting taking of clandestine or thievery of gas. Because it has something to do with something very, very dangerous, very dangerous, that puts at risk the life of lots of people. And we, in with one month, we've had two acts such as this. <coughs> And these have made us have to act in a emergency manner to evacuate. In the case of Ixtalpan, the state of Mexico, lots of families. And yesterday again, it happened again in Puebla. And we want to inform the populace about this, what's happening, and to to call, make a call out to these that are dedicating themselves to combustible, especially to gas, the very high risk that they run. We have behaved well, and we've had fortune, and I want to thank very much the Pemex workers, all of them that labor in the protection of the public, and also to let the people know that that they've listened because we've done this call out that they can stop um, leave those communities and they've attended to our uh, calls but we need to prevent these cases. We do not want any misfortunes or mishaps. We don't want any loss of human life. And it would be better to continue to inform over these matters. And of course, we're, be we're behaving cautiously, we're being vigilant, and we've been able to reduce the, the loss of combustible or theft, but there still is some areas or people or groups that act and that could put at risk the life of the people. And I would like that first to show 
uh, how we've been able to reduce the uh, loss of or theft of combustibles. Uh, can you put the one from today or yesterday, the slides? So that we can know and be informed. Take a look here. It's practically stable. It's very low. And it hadn't gone back up Well, when it comes to gas theft. And you can see on the ducts. On November last year, it was 81,000 barrels. And yesterday, there was only 5,000. This is, we would say, is controlled. And we want to lower it even more and make it disappear. All the ducts are functioning except for those two of all of them. And we have them all out. However, it has not stopped functioning. The duct, Tuxpan Asalto Capan, which is the principal one. which is the one that um, it give, um, provides gas to the whole um, area of um, Mexico. So this is regarding gasoline. But lately, we've been having uh, some presentation of uh, gas thievery, which is very risky. And so I want to ask David Leon, who's the director and coordinator of uh, production uh, civil, to, to explain to us. Very well. And hello, everyone, to all of you. And we want to remind you that uh, the protective system is running uh, all the time, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, for the private sector, social sector, public sector. But as the president said, that the whole population has a great job of helping us in a very way, in all the phenomena that is existing in the whole territory regarding these risks and um, that are associated with the ducts. Like the president said, in the last month, in the month of August, we had a first complex episode in Exlalpan in the state of Mexico, which was about the same time in the morning or early. There was reported a, um, a fugue or a escape, gas escape, and it runs from the south of our country to Reforma Chiapas. It's a tube that's about a 20-inch duct, and it runs to Saplatonejo, Jalisco, and it distributes LP gas, and that's the one that they use in homes of our country. And in the case of Exlalpan, practically very close to some uh, uh, neighborhoods, and with the collaboration of the government and the collaboration of the populace, evacuation an evacuation was done in a timely manner. And we were able to make a circle of security so that the population would not get near it. And besides that, we closed the road and we closed the train tracks to prevent that there would be any sparks that could generate an explosion. And to remind you that LP gas has a 
very complex management. Within the duct, it runs at a very high pressure, and it's a liquid. And at the moment that it comes out of the duct, it becomes a gaseous form. And then it multiplies more than 200 times. And that makes it a very uh, complex uh, handling uh, for that. <clears throat> so we could see that there was this uh, like foam, frothy foam, and, and like a cloud for the first few hours. But the, when it gets hot, uh, it dissipates with the heat, and it happens quickly, and that's very important. But the job for the petroleum workers uh, and the Secretary of Defense and the National Defense and the Municipal and Protective Areas, they were able to close the valve in the to the duct. But there's always a remnant within the ducts from where they close it to the place of where it's escaping. Like when you close a, a hose in your uh, garden, you close, you turn off the duct or the gas or even the water, and some will remain in the hose. So the remnant will dissipate in order for them to be able to get near the duct. And this very important part, it also uh, freezes the land as it comes out. So the men and women of Pemex, what they have to do is break ice in order to get to the duct and identify the point of escape and then select the most adequate method to repair it. And Extrapa, we have uh, had very much fortune or been very fortunate because immediately the Pemex workers were able to find the valve and it was just a matter of closing it. So less than 12 hours, they were able to close it and the, and the gas stopped coming out. But yesterday also, there was another closure of the street, they did another uh, barricade and the, uh, they evacuated the people from that area. And this time was a lot less people, but but there w we also had the collaboration of the people, which was very helpful. And Pemex made very um, many attempts uh, to get close to the point, but we were worried that the um, that we were worried that it would be stay night and then it would dissipate and go into the population if it stayed on all night. But they did have a very good a bunch of uh, workers. This permits us to, to find a map from any computer and find the infrastructure of the territory. And so we can immediately, even early hours of the morning, and we can find that within 500 meters there was, there was lots of uh, homes and there could have been and there could be lots of people that could have, citizens that could have been hurt. If it would have precipitated, it would have, and if it would have run all night. So that's why, that's one of their intents at the end. They ended, it could be very complex. Once they find it, then they made the decision to to make a burn uh, the remnant gas controlled, or they have to wait to, or, or we have to put down fire. Just like when you turn on your stove, the stove or the pilot is burning the gas, almost the same thing. So we did an evacuation of the equipment for the uh, equipment, uh, safety equipment, and this puts at risk the population. And we want to thank the people that work in the um, rescue workers of all the uh, three areas of government. And the evacuation was done. We did a previous information to the media, and we let them know we were doing this process so that all could could be informed. And the personnel of Pemex started the fire.
to that um, gas escape or leak. <clears throat> so this is a video. You can see where they burned it. Wow. So that was the remnant gas that they were burning. So that went very well, it looks like. So you can see there was a lot of gas escaping. Oh my gosh, people need to stop doing this. This is so dangerous. Wow. So what you see is where they, like a pilot, <laughs> it's, it's like a pilot when you turn on your pilot and it burns off the gas. But it, this time it's still running. So they still got the circle of uh, protection on it and nobody was injured. Nobody died. Pemex is um, uh, making sure that the, within the last few hours, um, after the gas is gone, then they will be able to repair that duct. And remember that the complexity that this uh, combustible has makes it very difficult job to repair and to rescue. And we're privileged that in these two events, both in Ixtlalpan and in, in Atcajete, in Puebla, there existed a great coordination in the three levels of government and something very important that the population listened to the authorities. They did the evacuation as it was supposed to be done and they left or uh, got away from the combustibles and they were able to permit the important um, national um, to um, save the life of the inhabitants. And if you would permit me to make recognition of uh, petroleum workers, because they give use their talent and uh, their intellect and that are, they put themselves at risk, you know, to help people. And those that are doing this are putting everybody at risk, thousands of people. So we're thankful to the, to the three levels of government and recognize the Secretary of Defense, the National Guard, that in conjunction help us to make these uh, uh, protective barriers and to protect the people to help with the evacuation because they fear that their all their homes and everything, their property is at risk. But especially in the area of Ixtlalpan, in neither event did we have any injury for the people. No lesions, no injuries, no deaths. Thank you very much. So now to finish with this matter, why don't you put on the first, um, uh, regarding the, not regarding the theft, but these last ones, we want to uh, see regarding the uh, gas um, cloud. Yes, the one with the cloud. Yes, that one. Look here. See there? See that? See that? Those are the heads of the National Guardsmen, I guess, he's showing you. And people. So he's letting us know that they're really working hard to protect. Yesterday also, in, in a uh, fire in Michoacan, they intervened, the military. And I liked it very much that in the webs, they, um, they showed a 
a um, image of a soldier carrying a, a cylinder of gas because it's and that's what happens daily and it's the workers and the workers of Pemex and the federal electricity uh, all of them I want to recognize them for their work and their jobs and, and we want to ask for the for people to have more sense that are putting on the people at risk think about it and think about your neighbor think about your people your families those around you to not be behaving like this in this illicit behavior that there's other ways to make money that are better to give your children uh, uh, an inheritance of poverty than dishonor why why are you going to bring this um, to the conscience this type of actions all that's damaged to are uh, done to other people the suffering of other people I do not believe that a human being is actually bad by nature. I believe that it's the circumstances that bring them to some to, to take on this road of delinquency. And I believe in the creation I, I believe in, in that. And that's why we're informing you. Because I know that I, it's not preaching in the desert. I know they will listen. And it's the best way, in the best manner, than then to to make the the country more serene look here there's that picture that will happen yesterday also they were carrying the tanks the gas tanks that was in Michoacan in a a plastics factory So now let's go on. But we're going to um, let's start back there, and we'll start with a woman, because there's a lot of exclaiming that that he says I have no problem with my conscience because I have have not been showing any preference. It's just that. There's so many, I guess. He says, just go ahead. Okay, Mr. President, I want to ask you, precisely yesterday, the Secretary of Government of, uh, had a video that was circulating in the web that could not be, uh, she was saying that they were dialoguing that uh, they were dialoguing with uh, crime or groups of crime 
and that they were thinking about putting down their arms, and then there was a, a declaration or a correction from the, um, and they want to know who are they having dialogue with and what's going on. It doesn't appear to be a edited video. No, no, we do not have dialogue with with people that are in the groups of organized crime the way the way they were saying it no we do not have that relation with them yes in the plan the national plan of development we have been proposing a mechanism in order to uh, try to get peace in the country. But it's a process, and we haven't initiated it yet. Because I always explain that in order to gain peace, you need to advance uh, uh, link by link because it's a chain. And you need to attend to the causes that originate the delinquency, that we rescue the, the fields, that we give them work, that you attend to the youth people. That's very important. And we've also instituted the National Guard and consolidated it. That's another thing. And we've also initiated the campaign to diffuse regarding addictions. And that's another matter that's important. And like this, we're going to be advancing. But we haven't yet gotten to to get become get in agreement with the people because we want to convoke or evoke those people to the citizens and organizations and civil the churches we have to um, encourage a dialogue a consultation in order to make a decision but we haven't done that yet basically but that's what I can say what about with groups of crime have there been dialogue no there hasn't been what we do have is a planning to look for to look for a process of peace in the country with the participation of all but to be defining it also and listening to all and of course especially to the victims and you cannot do anything without to ex unless you have the um, consult of the victims uh, nothing that means self-defense like the governments did before we consider that that was inappropriate because public security has to be guaranteed by the state we cannot promote the creation of groups in order to attend to matters of security. That would not function, and it does generate lots of dysfunction. So much so is the dysfunction that when they started to do that strategy, there were no results. On the contrary, it aggravated the situation. So no, not that. According to the Constitution, it's to the state of the Mexican uh, country. Is they need to provide the production uh, protection of the citizens. 
So no, we are not going to uh, renounce that faculty. And we are working every day. That's why we created the National Guard, in order to, to bring forth peace. In the matter of the no persecution, but also to give justice, and regarding the ex-governors, and um, to give me the um, Um, to ask you whether the um, if they exist then the fiscal um, our district attorney as they are doing it in other cases all these um, uh, files that were being analyzed, all the processes and investigation that are being motivated or done by the um, um, district attorney, the only part I've had in this that I could say in this case, is, and that is like a recommendation that's respectful is that they not pol politicize these matters because it's very difficult. Yes, it's very complex because then there's this bad habit of utilizing all these cases with purposes of electoral uh, situations, like in Coahuila, they, I, it's, I, I know for a fact that a party was accusing of acts of corruption to authorities. And I'm not even going to mention the names, and nor am I going to say what party. But they accused and accused, and that the people of that uh, party Ex were exonerated uh, from that person. So there was a double discourse. One part was the public plaza that was saying one thing. There's corruption. And there was management that was, uh, uh, they were saying that there was inappropriate use of resources. And on the other side of the same people, they were extending uh, jobs of not exercising Trumpenal. From the same party. But that it needs to pass to history, but to the trash of history, trash can, or waste. No, I don't want to repeat myself. I just want to explain, because you already, you've, you're <laughs> professional lookers, <laughs> and you have all the elements or can find them all yourself. And the way it was the modus operandi. So that was the previous regimen, but no more of that. And not to stop thinking that the Attorney General and all the cases that occur and they need to be attended by the district attorney or the attorney general. Uh, 
Regarding sports, Gonzalez, uh, for promotion, says that he will have to five or six academies in all of Mexico. Two of them will be in Sonora, and that they will not be needing any money because or saying that they are not getting any help. So they want to start sports in the more than 3,100 uh, schools in the country because they want to find talent. <coughs> they want to know if the 350 million of that they've given to uh, uh, that any of the budget of the 350 was. Oh, he says very good that you asked me about that. When we talked about the recovery of the two stadiums, the one from Hermosillo and the one from Obregón, we generated a, um, something that uh, was uh, related to the, um, it's a project that we are going to impulse because it means two stadiums that are very well local. Um, they have a good uh, situation or situated very well. And uh, in both cases, there's two new stadiums and they have been left in these spaces so then, of course, it's taking into um, effect a project which is being re to rehabilitate and utilize areas that exceed or annexes to construct hotels. Uh, commercial centers in such a way that with these constructions they will be able to finance the expenses of the acquisition of the two stadiums which you will find our property which belong to the people of Sonora. And the purpose is to help the government of Sonora because there is a debt with the workers and the service um, of the state and pensions. And of course, that money, which the government would receive from Sonora, it's for the workers that work for the state. Yes, that will go into effect and we are uh, studying it. It would be with the financing of uh, hand labor and we're promoting this situation. We would uh, are very interested in sports, and we want to fix the um, stadiums and the academies for for youth. And at the same time, they're the um, schools for physical education, and it's like a commercial. Um, so that they will be uh, self-sufficient. So this created lots of uh, uh, controversy. And you don't want them to think that it's not going to be done. Uh, due to questioning, we're going to stop promoting this. Uh, 
And I will maintain um, um, public spaces that will give it more beautiful for the cities. Why not? Why not in Hermosillo? Why not there? Yes, such as you say, because they said it was 500 million to to construct it because they didn't take into account the land. And they said that they're buying the land. And so there's 20 hectares that are being on the side of the hectares. And if the stadiums, wouldn't it have been better to start from zero? These, um, no, it's already been done. No, that's more complicated. So now in the back, because the ones in the front, I'm, I'm only sending it, um, but the, usually I used to go in the front because those come earlier, but now we're starting in the back. Can you let us know a little bit about modus operandi of this um, people that that are get involved in the uh, thievery of the gas, but let's say we go to sleep and we don't see nothing. Um, that very early they come. How is it possible they don't hear anything? Um, no, we don't know the modus operandi of these groups, but we do know is what the what we do in order to protect, to handle an uh, incident of this type. And preliminary, I can tell you that the Secretary of Defense, National Defense, that is in charge of this, also with the additional institutions that are in charge of taking care of these ducks, they give an alert, and they, we have extraordinary institutions within uh, the center. <clears throat> so we're always receiving information regarding what's going on in the territory. Not only the um, advisement of the authorities, but also advising the uh, population and calling 911 so that, so from any point of the uh, territory can let somebody know the presence of any behavior or act of clandestine uh, taking of gas. And right away we would um, start checking um, and, you know, have the municipalities of the um, civil um, authorities. And we try to establish, uh, you know, like the firemen and all that. And coincidentally, yesterday I visited um, we wanted to um, we wanted to see if like in the um, like three in the morning that's extraordinary public servers they went to every door and asked people to leave their homes and from here I went to I Xlapan to recognize and that they are taking care of the uh, people and the state, um, the Red Cross, the fireworkers, and they put a, a 
station, a command station, incident command station, and they do this throughout the country. And if there's an emergency that other, other countries will intervene, we have a common language that other states and countries understand. And we made a perimeter of security, we do the evacuation that needs to be done, and the personnel that specialized will work in the area. We put two privileged fundamental, um, which is the life of the population and the patrimony or the um, belongings of the people. Like, for example, the incident of Morelia, that, uh, that we have 100% of control in Morelia and we, cre we were able to evacuate 4,600 people and all of them were safe under that system of co uh, incident command centers where we all acted. And right now, there is an incident command center right now in Morelia that's supervising that in, uh, burning or fire. And for fire or incidents that are bigger, like a, a hurricane, uh, earthquake, we have a we have a committee, national committee of emergencies, that would be uh, presided over with the president, that permits us to make decisions and identify the risk in a time and to react during the emergency to give good and. Uh, protection to the population. And that incident will conclude within the next few hours in Morelia, 100% liquidation in Morelia. In Acajete, well, the duct will be completely repaired. And that's how we this system functions nationally to protect the people. And, um, Yes, we have two, a family plan of production and to be able to um, carry always a, a bag, have a safety bag with you. And if we have a federal protection agency we can inform you. And then we have a plan to help us directly. I just want to compliment you that your question, is there a system of uh, permanent vigilance of the ducks? Yes, there is. Um, there is a vigilance that is being done by the National Guard. The Secretary of Marines um, they want to be examining all the ducks and, uh, and to make sure there's no theft going on because we have personnel that's being vigilant over the ducks and it means thousands and you can see I want that, so you would go to where a leak is um, they do it like even in the early mornings because they're always being vigilant because they they are figuring out how to handle these illicit acts it's not that there is no vigilance Thanks to this, we were able to reduce the theft of com uh, combustible gasolines. No, but it is not sabotage. It's thievery of combustible, in this case, in this case, gas. Um, a while ago, you were talking about the importance of consuming 
Um, it seems that uh, mayors and other people do not take it this way. There was, uh, say, there was some kind of American football, and so they do not take into effect this strategy to create spaces, to take the, the children out of the area. What message would you give to the parents and the children that are already in these campuses, and what could the government, federal government, do to support these institutions? To do a call out to all the people, all the authorities, so that they not there's this bad practice to sell campuses that are sports uh, spaces for central they convert it to commercial centers to to make homes this is a bad um, matter that used to happen uh, recurrently and they would repeat it and it has to be uh, stopped and if they are doing that now it's because of that inertia but the fourth transformation is to guarantee spaces for sports and not to invade the areas of sports. I'm telling you this because because we've behaved like this before in the past. And when I was a governor, I was um, watching that they would um, uh, maintain these sports um, fields. They wanted to commercialize a sports arena in Van Rural, Cuitalpa. And we decided to buy it in order to, to destine it for uh, older adults. And yes, it's there. Because they wanted to sell it, and it was possible for it to be used in order to, like for for uh, commercial centers, um, like for the next. Um, there's other um, areas of sports for the sports media. And I want to say they did not exercise their influence, nor did they get uh, stubborn. Televisa said there. Um, and they were buying it. Uh, they wanted to buy like one of these stores, commercial, like a Ixo a la Banca, like a famous one. And they would pay them a lot. And all they wanted all they wanted from us was to give them permission. So we have to be careful here in the state of Mexico that there be, um, be that we not have so much contract, uh, con concrete which will maybe block the aqueducts. And, you know, it would be hard to all the water would, instead of filtering, it goes away to the drainage. And that uh, provokes um, 
you know, have been uh, inundated. And so you have to be careful, the susceptibility of the, of the state. And the state also, it's um, unknown. And it could give us life because more than half of its territory is rural. And there's um, forests and there's water ducts. And half of that is what allows or permits us to have oxygen. And you would want to continue the um, mancha, the uh, urban water to to the uh, to these delegations. So there's areas that give environmental services of first quality, which are fundamental for the city. And in that case, we said no, we could not utilize the permits. And it was not given, uh, but he did not understand the um, um, <laughs> I can't think of that word. So um, we have to take care of all these spaces. So they put some machinery in to destroy the campus, and they've already closed the campus. So who do they go to? So perhaps we need to. It's never too late, and we need to look for options. But we need those spaces for sports. Yes, we want to promote um, the, the sports, um, and we are want to be able to confront with. Um, you know, to be able to fight chronic conditions that's preventative med medicine. How do we attend diabetes, a hypertension? Only with a focus for, uh, for, for healing? No. That would be too expensive. To be attending this ma uh, problems this way, we have these um, diseases that require hemodialysis, which were not prevented. They're suffering. Now they have to travel three hours, five hours. And so, yes, we are going to resolve that they be able to be attended where they live or close to where they live, but not be thinking about it, in it only in healing, but also to give um, all the education for uh, health and preventative medicine, sports, and lots of times also, all these spaces are, are sold due to corruption. Sometimes they were just using the, the, the ground, but I spoke of that um, novel from 
uh, Carlos Fuentes, and the main central theme was how a politician, a revolutionary of the North, came to the city of Mexico, and due to influences, he started buying land where they were going to be putting the avenues. And it was converted, or he was converted into a millionaire, and he wound up a banker. He was a, a, a person in the uh, novel, Robles. So how does he do it? How does he make that fortune? With trafficking influence uh, they were going to create value due to the infrastructure from the country. So the use of the ground, a lot of the times it's that, it's corruption. So we need to be cautious with that. The chief of government of the city is a woman that's honest, that has a commitment of defending the uh, environment, and it's a guarantee that these things not happen in the city, and they should not be permitted in the country. I have two cases that come to my mind that are fresh in my mind. One, Sierra of San Miguelito in San Luis Potosí, which is a very good initiative that is be converted into a reserve, a natural reserve. The Sierra of San Miguelito, which is near the city, which is a change of politics. Because as I commented before, the time of neoliberalism, the, the hill, in emblema, the one that's in San Luis Potosí in the Escudo, is the Sierra, um, is the hill, San Pedro Hill. And they, they gave it in, as a concession to a um, foreign um, company. And so the, the hill is there no more. They finished it off. And they finished the population. Because they extracted the mine, the mine extraction. So now they convert the, the, they converted, now they want to convert it uh, to a um, reserve. It's like converting the, uh, uh, the um, uh, jails into schools, which is something you would have to think about. And another project like that would be Querétaro also. They want to convert it into an uh, area a rural area that's important. It's a reserve area because there has been a lot of disorder and mobile, lots of growth, urban anarchy due to uh, businesses between particular people and authorities. So now we have to put these things back in order. And the same in the case of the spaces of that are assigned for sports, like sports fields. Yes, of course. If there's elements, all the citizens need to help. It's not a matter just for the, or for one man. 
to the president or the authorities. Politics is a matter for everyone. And that's how the people are understanding it. They help us with this. So all of us, we need to be guardians. All of us need to be vigilant. All of us need to be careful with the budget of the, of the people, the public um, budget, which is sacred. So regarding the uh, risk atlas, the um, director of uh, PEMEX said there was some deficiency and that it was necessary to actualize it. And that was regarding the explosion that happened in 2010, that there was an explosion there. In the previous authorities, they wrote an agreement with the previous government of Puebla to prevent that this would not happen again. And they said with alerts and alarms, would this not be the time to stimulate? Would you want to negotiate? Because it's a bad business. And governments, like you said, are corrupt. They put, put these situations that are corrupt and not good for the people. And finally, Mr. President, they commented that in the state of Zacatecas, there was a mining company, Tarasquillo. They opened, but say, uh, so they left these people without jobs in Zacatecas because they wouldn't agree to something with mining. The National Atlas of Risk that anyone can consult is www.atlas and something the riesgos.com it has many areas of information it works permanently online it has no information that's reserved anyone can go into it and put your address in and see the infrastructure what that's around it how much population we have in that area what in risk infrastructure is in that area and also, um, it also has some other applications, like the monitoring of, of the uh, um, volcano that is shared by five states of the country. And it has areas of what would, like, like a previous of what would happen, like scenes that you would know what to do if certain things happen or if there was a flood and it's got the, about the two um, municipalities and what vulnerabil vulnerabilities are in every area. And so if there was um, instability in the areas and which ones are at highest risk for being flooded with the rains, like from the 15th of May to the 30th of November, it's an extraordinary tool which permits the citizen and the functionary to identify the risk and to, with that information, make decisions and to apply, there's lots of applications. And in that atlas, you could put your zip code, and it'll give you the phone number of who to call and the name of the functionary in your state and uh, national functionary. It's a great tool so that every day is being used. Every day they're receiving new information from one or another phenomena that is happening and diverse in this country that has to do with the risks. The municipalities also use their um, atlases, their protection of their civil protection, and then also committees on the 
community that for protection. Also on the state level, they have an atlas level state. And it identifies the vulnerabilities and the risks in your territory. And the federal government, with all its institutions, says CFE, Enehi, Serena Marina, uh, feed this platform which is always being updated, which is, permits us to be more informed to make decisions regarding the territory, which can always be better. Is there areas that need to be um, corrected? Yes, there are areas, but we're giving information to the governor so they can elevate the um, atlases for each one of their territories. So it's the mine that is in Mazaville, in Zacatecas. It's a mine of uh, silver that is very important, and it has had problems um, that a property owners and that the company stopped the mine for a time and it was intervened so that they could come into an agreement and then they reopened it and it is now working and they came to some agreements and now we are um, monitoring that they come to these agreements and that they continue to um, uh, have this mine function. It's very important to maintain these fountains of work. Well, because as you know, jobs that are given by these companies are given to a lot of people. And, and there's a mining syndicate whose director is Napoleon Gomez Urrutia. But it is not a conflict of the syndicate, there is understanding and these um, property owners, they have this organization and they're asking for to be attended to um, because there is an agreement with them and we are hopeful that it the situation become normalized. They are still close in their appeals. And I was near there in Concepcion del Oro, which is a municipality that is nearby or that is neighbor. It's also a mining area. I went last week and I spoke regarding this matter. And regarding the debt, the public debt and the interest that we're paying on that, we are going to comply with the uh, payment of that because we are, we need to comply with all our commitments internationally and that the government has agreed to or the previous governments have agreed to. It's a matter of respect to the agreements and respect to the legality and to and to make things um, you know uh, comply with whatever was previously agreed to and what we are taking into effect is to try and find agreements with the volunteer voluntary um, area of each part. And if they are in agreement, like in this case, financiers, and if we make an, a proposal of restructuring, that would, that would not, that would mean that we would decrease part of the debt, then yes, that will take place constantly. We 
are trying to uh, this is done by the Secretary of Hacienda. We are not going to make any uh, legal modification or make any decisions unilaterally. We are going to respect all commitments, economical and financial. There are things that should have been cared for in the past, not to be, make us indebted or the country so indebted as they did. Because I've commented before, with Fox, the debt was 1.7 million. Calderon, the debt left it at 5.2 million billion. It grew more than 200%. Uh, and they had resources. Because in the uh, six years of Calderon, because the prices of petroleum were high and they were even up to a hundred dollars a barrel. Never in the history of a six-year term had they received so much money due to the sale of petroleum to the foreign uh, countries. But at the same time, the debt grew more than 200%. And with President Peña, it grew an, in nominal terms to 10 billion. We're talking about 45% of the uh, starting. That's what the, what the debt means. And the service or the interest in effect is more than 600 million yearly. What are we doing? A great effort. And that's why the austerity that's why zero corruption, it's going to end this corruption. Me canso ganso, which means if I'm lying, I'm dying, so that we don't continue to uh, increase the debt. So, Mr. President, regarding the workers that are outside, they continue the Secretary of Transport and, um, informed me, the Secretary informed me, uh, the engineer, uh, that they've been talking with the workers that were, uh, uh, that were uh, let go due to the uh, loss of Mexicana Airlines or that it went broke or went under and it permitted it was permitted by the previous government also it's another another uh, that was left to us from the neoliberal politics. Remember, there was two um, places. I have to keep reminding you because people seem to forget. It seems like it happened in the 19th century or in the 16th century. This man, Ascarra, helped in the campaign of, 
of candidate Fox and he, when he got to his presidency, Fox and, and so they sold Mexicana and this guy bought it or he received it or he benefited from the sale from Rescargada and so then he puts it under this big company that was in that was very important for aviation an emblem and they left the workers without jobs this was Mahicana. and then after that three years later another lesson a group of business owners help in another fraud Felipe Calderon and they put Felipe Calderon in office and to those business owners he gave them Aeromexico the other uh, airline public airline in, in, so basically what's happened now we no longer have a company airline that's public for aviation and so we inherited all these problems so now we're going to help where as far as we can but we have to protect the budget we have to be very efficient and to end corruption with influentialism with anti-democracy with the regimen of injustice and privileges not to forget not do not forget but we can't anchor ourselves to this past just because the matter comes up and we just conceptualize it because it's not like just like you come here from the workers of Mexican uh, airlines. They come and ask for justice. It's almost like someone might think that we did it. We originated this problem or that we are somehow in, in uh, preventing justice from happening. So, so that's why we're letting you know what caused it and that never again should you associate or uh, take the not to let them feed each other the political and the financial like they did they need to be separated forever the, the government needs to represent everybody they can't be having politics <laughs> like being in the hands of just a few like it was so now everyone is being attended, fortunately. The business owners, our businessmen, are helping a lot. I was speaking as to the uh, via the negotiation, you can come to agreements, even though they had contracts that were considered to be excessive or damaging for the public because I don't want to use the other word um, but now we're coming to agreements and we're advancing in coming to agreements with the companies that constructed the gas ducts but because they are are 
they're manifesting that they want to contribute that it not affect the public hacienda. They don't want it to, they don't want to force the electrical company to be, um, go under, because that was another time. According to our vision, it was an excess to contract these gas ducts or the transport of gas in an excessive way. These ducts that don't even have they don't take it to any plant or thermo, uh, electric plant from the electrical company. And now we have to figure out how we're going to use, utilize that gas. Because now they thought they would do the business from the ducts or the lines, but they did not take into account the needs of the country, how much energy would be generated. For example, we need gas in the peninsula, and we need gas in the, so there won't be any uh, uh, hikes in the price, and we have but they didn't take into account these projects with this purpose. They only planned the gas that, that came through a marine duct that would be taken to the southeast, changing the direction of the gas duct that was already made. I was commenting that was made in the time of uh, Lopez Portillo because they accused him. There was lots of controversy because they said they're going to take away our gas and we're going to give all our gas to the United States. And so they, they were against that duct. And now the paradox or the contradiction is that instead of taking the gas to the U.S., now the duct or the tube is being utilized to bring us the gas from the U.S., but, but with agreements, and they are helping us, these businessmen. They're contributing. We would need to see if, um, if we have the funds if it's viable, we are representatives of the country. And we would have to analyze that they be justice. And not to discard anything, to talk to the workers, to look for options to, for alternatives. One of the things that we guaranteed since the beginning was that in all the judgments, there would be no um, in, there would not be pressure in a deep political country or judicial country. We would not be looking for resolutions like it was a custom at that time. They would fix everything, buying or cooperating from the 
um, judicial. So we don't have these practices anymore. Authentic state of right, correctness. No, nothing against workers or against any person of any per, uh, person that judges act with absolute liberty that and they apply the law and I'm leaving now uh, regarding the gas we are advancing I expect to have shortly results we are doing very well we have not stopped dialoguing or speaking. I am a participant. Personally, in the table, yesterday, on Monday, um, uh, and today, Wednesday, we are personally dealing with this matter and we're going on a uh, tomorrow I'm going to I'm going on a trip to Chiapas for a meeting and everyone's invited Oh. and the Americas it's one of the areas with most natural beauty in the country which is on the um, um, which is in the um, are the rivers that um, divide Guatemala from Mexico. <laughs> Rio Sumacinta, which is the sacred river. We're going there because there's a hospital and that we need to see. And we're going to Villahermosa and then we're going by road. To Benemerito. And on Friday, which is uh, very late, from Villahermosa to Benemerito, and when we return, we're going to have a security reunion from 6 to 7 in the morning and on Friday from 7 to 8 the, the press conference in Villahermosa on Friday that's the program and on Saturday and Sunday there will not be a uh, run because I'm going to to be writing um, so for something for the first I have to prepare my my uh, paperwork for uh, for the first so so he's going to La Quinta it's a ranch has no hectares and then La Quinta has he has a Quinta of uh, 13,000 uh, square meters and, or one hectare and 3,000 metros. It's just a small property. It's not that big. It's not a ranch. It could be a lot of hectares, <coughs> a thousand hectares, like a ranch, but that's not what he has. He just has a, he has a quinta. But there, that's where I write. 
now, now that I'm going to be informing you on the first, and so I'm going to take advantage of that, and I will be there. And I'll see you guys on Sunday in the morning. So they get happy because they're going to have a free weekend. 